I'm going to bring you guys through some product productivity tips today. So this is obviously going off the assumption that you've already uh, familiarised yourself with adaptive in your environment. And these are more so just some tips on how to um, use potentially the browser or adaptive to help um, enhance your experience overall. Um, and so, yes, this is going to be a bit of a discussion on various things you can do such as Explore Cell, which I'm glad all of you are currently already using. And um, yeah, just keyboard shortcuts to help, you know, open new tabs, save and run reports for those of you that might not be quite familiar with it as well. Um, so to begin with, I'll go through three things. So the first will just be general browser tips. The second one will be adaptive shortcuts. And the third one will be more so like adaptive customizations and little things that you can do within adaptive as well. Um, with the browser shortcuts, I am using Chrome. Uh, if you are using Firefox or IE as your default browser, these might not work 100%, but um, there should be some sort of comparative as well. So um, yeah, just I thought most people do use Chrome and that is what we're going to do so for this demonstration. Um, and just one thing to note, so I'll be going through some keyboard shortcuts and stuff, but you don't need to take notes as Dave has mentioned and Troy as well. We will be publishing an article alongside this, so everything will be on, the, on there. Okay, so within this browser, obviously Chrome likes to use tabs and there are quite a few different ways to open new tabs. So first one is probably just right clicking as you are all familiar with, I assume. And then the second one would be to do control on your keyboard. So the control button, then click. And then the third option, which um, is just to actually use your mouse. There's like a little scroll bar on here. And so if you click on the scroll bar, it actually opens up a new tab as well. So there are quite a few different options uh, to open some sheets. So again, you can right click or if you want, you can also do control click. Now I've just opened up some tabs that I'm actually going to go through as part of this demo as well. Um, but say you've opened up a few tabs, what you can do to toggle through them rather than just using your mouse. If you are very much into the keyboard, you can do control tab and that will just move you along each tab within these sheets. Okay. Um, and so say for example, that this is your current view, but you actually want to see FY20, you wanna see all of the months for FY20. This is just in the PNL, could be in any report, doesn't quite matter. Um, Sorry, I'll just give this a moment to load. Yep, and so say you actually want to see a breakdown of all the different months for FY20 and FY21, and this is the def like the view that you want to save. You can obviously press the save button. Alternatively, if you really want, you could use the keyboard settings as well. So that would be Control Alt S. And so if I just click on that, it now saves the sheet. This also works for dashboards um, and reports as well. And so um, let's say we're going to explore a cell. So we want to explore December 2021. You want to see what um, this revenue was made up of. And so I just right clicked on explore cell and up popped this, um, this window. And so I'm going to just click through so I can figure out what company A was made up of. And say you've accidentally clicked here. So click through on company A, 100% owned, and you've got a no values. And so what you actually want to do is go back. Instead of just closing and reopening Explore Cell, you can right click 
and just go back and use the sort of standard browser functionality that comes within um, Chrome or whatever browser you're using itself and then continue on to navigate through to operations. Um, say you wanted to go down to the United States and look at that itself. Alternatively, if you don't quite like these back and forwards buttons, um, what you can do is click on this toolbar at the top here. So where it says Cell Explorer Google Chrome, you can click on that. I right clicked on that and click Show as tab. And that will bring through these little arrow buttons. So uh, if you want to go back, you can go back. If you want to refresh, you can also refresh um, this page as well. And it's just useful, I think, with exploring in case you actually really do need to drill down into the data and then you want to go back out again. Okay. Um, so that's actually all the browser sort of shortcuts I have in mind. And now I'll move over to the adaptive ones. And before we begin, I just want to highlight that on this page, so I'm in a, the PL sheet at the moment. In the bottom right hand corner, there's a little keyboard. And if I click on that, this is um, like a reference guide for all the keyboard shortcuts that exist. So um, there are heaps, you don't have to remember them and adaptive doesn't expect you to, which is why they're all, um, I guess, just here for easy access. So once again, that's the little keyboard down the bottom over here. Uh, so what we're actually going to do next is just to show you how you might want to save a report using keyboard shortcuts. So in this report, for example, my revenue is out of order. I wanted it to be 4,000, then 41, 42, 43. So what I can do is edit this report. move the revenue to where I want it to be, so at the top. And then I'm going to actually press Control, Alt and R. And so I'll show you where that save button is. So that just simply saves it, but you actually have keyboard shortcuts that help save as a new report or save and run, which is what I'm going to do, but just with this keyboard. So. saved it and then now it's run it here. And so you can see, even though there's no data, 4,000 at the top, then 41, 42, 43. Um, moving on, some other little functions. Um, this is just a payroll global assumption sheet. You don't really need to pay too much attention to what's in here, but I'm just going to be working with this superannuation line here. So super is 9.5, and I just want to input the data into these cells as an assumption for payroll. Um, so what I can do is type in 9.5, quite simply, and then save that. But that's just keying it into one cell. If I want to, um, I can copy and paste this as one way of um, inputting the data into multiple cells. So I'm just pressing with my keyboard, control C and then control V, and that will paste it in as well. Alternatively, if I just click on this value, right click on it, I can copy forward and then copy to the end. And that will populate a whole line of data for you. That also works with the copy down. So if you want to copy down the page, if you've got multiple rows, you can copy the same data it's, uh, downwards as well. And so it just helps um, with quickly inputting things that you need to input to. Okay, so I think that's all as well in terms for the adaptive keyboard functions. Just to um, sort of iterate, what I've gone through with these ones is the save sheet. Um, the refresh or refresh and save reports, and then just these basic copy paste. There's also cut if you want to cut as well. 
Obviously, there are plenty more functions, so potentially take a look at that. Um, potentially pick a few that you, you quite like and you would like to incorporate in the future, but um, I don't think it's you need to remember every single one. I think that might be harder itself. Um, so just do whatever helps you be more productive. In terms of some other settings that we can do here, so I'm just going to navigate over to this balance sheet. And so as you can see, currently the time period set from December 2019 all the way to December 2021. What we can do is actually set up uh, the time period. So it might be a relative time period. And how you can do that is by defining the start and end periods here. So at the moment, it's set to a specific month, December 2019, and the, the end is just the end of this version. Instead, what you can set it to is potentially uh, the current year. And so the current year is FY21. So if I press OK, um, it just shows from January to December, FY21. Just keep in mind that in this demo version, that's um, their finance, or that's the year that they're going by from January to December, so not from July to June. Um, you can also set other time periods as well if you want. So there's start of version, start of plan. Um, I encourage you just to play around with these options, um, see which one suits you best, but just keep in mind, um, yeah, these might just help with you know, so you don't every month you don't have to reset the time periods and going forward with the next budget or next forecast, it will update automatically for you. Um, some other little customization tips. Um, so say Troy created a dashboard and I really liked that dashboard. And so I want to make it my home page. So every time I log in, that's the first thing I want to see. What I can do is click on my profile. So I'm Patrick for today, click view profile, leave that. And then I can set the home page up here. So currently it's as a welcome page. What I can set it to is a dashboard. Let's do this user group one and go revenue as the tab that I want to first see. So I'll save that. And then if I click on this home button, yeah. um, this is the, the dashboard that I currently see. Um, so obviously you know, it doesn't have to be a dashboard. You could set it up as a report, um, a sheet potentially, something that you use quite often and if you, you saw in this little view profile section, uh, there were plenty of other options. So it's up to you, but you can just customize your experience a little bit more um, by putting something that you, you view on a maybe daily, weekly basis as one of your home pages. Uh, and then the last thing that I wanted to touch on um, is just to do with user groups. And so this is just really to help with um, you guys with sharing information, assigning tasks and access to, rather than individual users, a group of users. Now, I'm not exactly gonna show you how to share these things in general, but more so just talk to you about setting it up so you can potentially consider um, using this in your own um, environment if you aren't currently already doing so. So I'm in the administration tab at the moment. And then under users and roles, there's global user groups. So I'll just click on that. And as you can see, we've got quite a number of groups set up. These are to help with planning. So there's board members, you've got your finance team, HR marketing team. And I'll just click on the finance team just to show you who we have inside. So we've got like the CFO, director, that sort of thing out of this available list of groups. You might have, you might be able to create a user group just for your sales team, potentially, if that's something you guys work on. And then that way, going forward, you can share um, reports, uh, sheets, 
just or even tasks just with your sales team rather than all the individual members within that team. Um, I think that is it for me. Um, so just to recap, I've talked you through some browser settings and how you might be able to open things in new tabs, explore cells and use toggle between um, pages within the explore cell functions. I've talked about some adaptive shortcuts as well and also just some little customization tricks too.